first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about what we call the caged system. Now, again, I don't know that this really has anything to do with theory other than theory of the fretboard, theory for us guitar players of being able to visualize things. Um, and so I really want to include this because I think it's something that could be really beneficial to you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about what is the cage system and how to apply it. Um, because the better you understand it, the easier it's going to be for you to use it. All right, so let's take something like the E major chord on the guitar. Okay, so we've got E major sitting right here. Now, if you've learned some of your theory or some chord knowledge, you probably know that you've got a fifth string E major bar chord up here. And of course, we've been talking about the notes and things like that on the guitar. And if you know your six string bar chords, you know you could play an E major chord all the way up here on the 12th fret. Okay? And what the caged chord system does is it tells us we could play that same E chord in all the spaces that we're not playing E. Like right now we're playing E down here in the first couple frets. And then we move all the way up to the seventh fret. And then we move all the way to the 12th fret. Well, re in reality, there's ways of being able to play an E chord all the way across this guitar or an A or a D or a B minor or whatever it is that you'd like to do. So that's what I'd like to show you. Now, the cage, the term cage, C-A-G-E-D. Okay, what that's referring to are the chord shapes C, A, G, E, and D, but laid out in front of you in that order, C, A, G, E, and D. Okay, so let me kind of show you this. Now, if I was on the E chord, what we have to understand is this is the E. Now again, for us as guitar players, this is the E chord, and this is the C chord, and this is the D chord. But let's try and separate, for now, understanding that this is the E chord, but it's also the E shape. This is the C chord, but it's also the C shape. This is the D chord, and it is, but this is also the D shape. Because what we want to do is take these shapes and start learning to move them across the guitar. And of course, as we start moving them, they're no longer going to be the chord they were, they're going to be the shape. This is going to be an E shape. No matter where I go, it's going to be the E shape, but it's not going to sound like E anymore, right? If that makes sense. So with this cage system, the easiest way to learn this to begin with is let's start by looking at it in the order that it is, C, A, G, E, D. So I'm going to start by making this C chord right here. Now it's a C chord using this C shape. So they're both coexisting in the same space perfectly, okay? Now, what we need to do is we need to move to the next letter, which is A. So what we're going to do is where that third finger is sitting right here, okay? We're going to bar across that, bottom five strings, and we're going to make the A shape with our third finger, okay? So all I've done is taken this A chord and moved it up here. Now, for you, you might recognize this as a fifth string bar chord, which it is, okay? But what is it in theory? Well, in theory, it's an A chord that's been moved up the guitar, three frets, right, with our human capo, which is the first finger. So the thread that locks the C shape and the A shape together is the third, uh, third fret there of the fifth string, okay? F visually, I'm seeing that third fret right there, which is C, and that's where that connection is happening, okay? So I'm moving from the C shape of C to the A shape of C. Now, where this third finger is, I'm going to bar over those strings right there, and I could just bar over the bottom four. It's perfectly fine. And I'm going to make a G chord with these three fingers. Now, look at what fret I'm on. I'm on the eighth fret, which is C. And you would have learned that when you were memorizing all your notes, right? So now I've got a G shape that's making the sound of C. Okay, now as we keep going here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you about the realism of what you're going to use this for. So if you try and play this and go, oh my gosh, that's really hard to play, you're absolutely right, okay? But I'm going to show you, once we can learn to visualize this, I'm going to show you some real, uh, real world perspectives here. Okay, so where these two fingers are, they're both on C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bar over the all six strings right there, and I'm going to make the next shape, which is the E shape, right? C, A, G, E. Now, this is an E shape, but it's making the sound of a C chord, C, E, and G. So now we've got the C shape of C, 
the A shape of C, aka the fifth string bar chord, the G shape of C, and the E shape of C, aka the sixth string bar chord. Now where my pinky is, I'm gonna bar over those bottom four strings and I'm gonna make the D chord, the D shape. So now I'm making a D shape, but again, what's it sounding like? It's sounding like C. You see? Now, where these three fingers are, which are making the D shape, if I was to bar over these three strings right there, put the first finger here, there's my D chord sitting right here, okay? But then I built the rest of this, I'd be making the C shape one octave higher with this little bar. Now I could bar over the bottom four or the bottom three or the bottom five. Again, it does whatever's comfortable for you, okay? The point is, is that what I'm making here is this D chord and then I'm adding the rest of my C shape here, which is this chord one octave higher. And that's how you cover the entire fretboard with C chords, okay? By using this ver these various shapes, okay? So again, you probably knew the open chord, you might have known the fifth string bar chord, you might have known the sixth string bar chord, which are absolutely crucial for you to learn, okay? But now what we're doing is we're filling in the blanks around it, okay? So you can play a C chord. Anywhere you want on the guitar, okay? Now if we took another chord, let's say we took the E chord for instance, and we do the exact same thing. Well, it's gonna work exactly the same way, except its starting point is obviously different. So now its starting point is an E chord with the E shape. So where that third finger is, I'm gonna bar over that, make the D shape, okay? But the D shape is now two frets higher, of course. It's gonna sound like E, okay? Now after the D shape, we go to the C shape because it starts all over. Pinky's on E right there, so it's gonna sound like E, even though it looks like a C. Fifth string bar chord, six, uh, G shape, sixth string bar chord, okay? And now we're one octave higher starting all over again. So that's the first thing you need to wrap your brain around. Sometimes concepts in theory, concepts in guitar, because sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're not, okay? We're approaching theory from a guitar perspective. And it's not that it's different, it's just I'm, I'm trying to uh, focus the information on something that you can find useful on the guitar itself, not just, not just in your brain. So when you're learning these things, what you have to understand is the, the concept first and then start applying it. Now there are a couple of shortcuts that I can show you that, that seem to work pretty well for people. Because we probably already know our sixth string and our fifth string bar chord, we can use those to benefit this caged structure. So let's say, for instance, I was dealing with the chord A. A might not be the best example, but it's what I'm gonna use. Okay, so if I knew the six string bar chord A, what A really is, this six string bar chord, is an E shape at the fifth fret. So if I think about my cage system, what I can do is build in front of it and behind it. I'm building off something that I know for a fact, right? When we build the cage system, C-A-G-E-D, it might be a little bit unfamiliar because we're starting with something and we're working our way up uh, with this new concept. Now, it might make perfect sense to you and that's wonderful, but if it doesn't, you can use this little shortcut by going with some things that you already know and building off of that. So if I know my six string bar chord, what I have to understand is I'm on the E shape, okay? So what that means is below me is the G shape and above me is the D shape. Because we think about C-A-G-E-D, G-E-D. So below this is the G shape, above this is the D shape. So we can go here and make the G shape and we can go above this and make the D shape. And we've all already got three fifths of the, the guitar built, you see, which is pretty cool. Now again, we haven't gotten to the, man, this is difficult, what am I gonna use this for? We'll get there in a second. I just wanna, again, make sure you understand the application of this, okay? So as I'm doing this, I've got my, uh, my E shape of A, below that is the G shape of A, and above that is the D shape of A. Okay, well let's keep building here. So six string, we gave, gave us the G shape, the E shape, obviously, and the D shape. 
Okay, well, let's go to the A chord sitting up here at the 12th fret. This one's kind of hard to see and there's nothing below it. So I'm just taking this and moving it up here. Here's my fifth string A bar chord. Below this A shape, okay, is the C chord. And above this A shape, think C, A, G, right, is the G shape. So there it fills in the rest of our shape. First of all, the, having the, a, the fifth string bar chord is the A shape. Below that is the C shape. The C shape connects to the D shape from this concept. So if you think about it, if you're using the six string bar chord as kind of your, um, your lock, okay, and you're building G outside and D outside, D then locks into the C shape coming from this string bar chord right here. You see? So that's how we fill in the gap. Above that A, is G. Now, again, up here, it's going to be pretty tough to play, but, and that's this all over again, one octave higher. Okay. So that's an easy way for you to be able to see that. So real quick, if you thought about it, if you wanted, um, a D chord. Okay. So D is sitting, which means below you is the C, right? And above you is the G. And you could just memorize that very quickly. D on the sixth string, below you is the G shape, above you is the D shape. And you could find those very, very quickly. So if that way is easier for you to visualize to connect this cage system, that's perfectly fine. So now let's talk about the real uh, usage of this. Now there's a couple of different things. For me, one thing that I love to do when I'm jamming with people or playing in church or whatever it might be, when I play in my metal bands, I don't use a lot of this cage system, but if I'm playing in more of a pop band or a rock band or a jamming situation uh, with more major sounding songs, this is where I'm going to use a lot of this in chord comping. So what I mean by chord comping is let's just take uh, A again. Okay, so I have A sitting here, and I have the G shape of A sitting here, and D's up here, right, all the way across my guitar. So what I'll do is I'll take, instead of playing this A chord, which if I'm jamming with other people, somebody is probably playing this A right here, right? And I could play the big A chord or the big, you know, fifth string A chord or something like that. But sometimes what I like to do is I comp chordal fragments. So I'm just playing a small section of something. So if you think about it, what I might do is let's say I went to this A up here, okay? And instead of playing this whole shape, I might just play this. Or Or here's my C shape of the A chord. I might just play a fragment of that. You see what I mean? So I could start doing things with just a fragment of that as opposed to the whole thing. I got A way down here. Well, I'm gonna move that way up here. Sorry, right there. And I'm gonna use this. So I might use fragments of those chords as I'm playing. Now here's where it gets even cooler is if I start trying to visualize multiple chords instead of blocking, I call it for lack of a better term, A and then G and then D, which isn't so bad. But when we move into bar chords, we get A and then G and then D. We get these big blocky sounds because the whole thing's got to move. And when we move, of course, the music stops. If I play G and then go to D, some of the strings will continue ringing out and it kind of adds a cohesion from one chord to the next. When I, when I play bar chords, I can't do that. I get these blocked sounds. So sometimes what I like to do, and again, it depends on the chord progression, but I'll try and see multiple chords in the same place, kind of like open chords somewhere else on the guitar, right? So let's say we had A, G, and D, just picking something off the top of my head. So, I could pick somewhere to go. Let's say I go to this shape here, A, D shape, or A, the C shape. One of those two, right in that area, just because I really like the sounds of those with these high strings. I really like that, okay? So when A is being played, I might do something like this, or something like this, or something like this, right? 
Now here comes G. That's our next chord is gonna be G. Okay, well then what I wanna do is I wanna visualize my cage system and see what I have available. So I have my six string G down here, which is way down there. It's nowhere near where, what I'm doing. There's a G up here, okay, and that's closer. And then I've got a G sitting here and a G sitting here. So what I might do is let's take this fifth string G, this A shaped G right here. So if I was playing here, then what I might do is move up and do something that correlates with that chord right there. I'm making it a sus here, just to make it sort of connected. So if Sony's playing A, I'm playing that, and then they go G. You see how cool that sounds? Then D comes up. Well, I'm sitting right here, so why not play the E shape of D, right? Because then all I'd have to do is take this thing and go. So now I've got this cool little thing going. Which sounds way different than. Now, I'm not saying this doesn't sound cool, I'm just saying it sounds different. Where this is more of a, a thing where maybe you're, you're doing a single note picking. It sounds pretty cool, okay? So there's the ways of being able to do that all across the fretboard, and that's a great way of using this cage system is for chordal comping, chord fragment comping, and putting things into one position on your guitar. Now, another thing that I like to do with this is I use it when I'm soloing, because if you think about it, what the cage system is doing is offering you the chord triads, right? It's offering you the chordal shapes. So if I was playing in the key of, well, here's A, here's G and D, if we stay with that idea, okay? I've got A, G, D, so technically, I'm in the key of D major. Uh, again, this is a modal thing, but I'd be in A mixolydian is what I'd be in, okay? Or D major. So as I'm playing here, what I could do is start adding in notes of the scale that's sitting inside here. Okay, and I'm gonna use this And I can start making up little solo ideas, melodic ideas. Uh. See what I mean? So I can make these up. Okay, so there's just a, and again, what I'm really doing here is I'm visualizing layering. I'm visualizing the caged chord that I'm looking for, the shape that I'm looking for, and then I'm visualizing on top of that or below that, however you want to think about it, the scale that's being played as well, and I'm just making simple connections. So instead of thinking about the guitar as just going... What I'm doing is I'm trying to think about, okay, here comes this A chord. And then here comes G. D comes up. And back to A. And just kind of connect those together. So I can think about going to an A chord, however I like. G. 
D. And then we got A. You see, you can kind of work your way around the fretboard however you like. So the cage system is great on multiple levels. Hopefully that helps you a little bit. If you want to play songs across the entire fretboard or play solos over different styles of music that people will love because they sound great and look effortless and ultimately have more fun playing guitar and have the confidence to jam with fellow musicians, then you're going to want to pay very close attention to this message. Because you're about to discover a simple way to play songs and solos across the fretboard that sounds amazing and looks so effortless that people's jaws will drop because they can't believe how well you're playing without spending hours of your time learning confusing music theory. My name is Steve Stein and I'm a guitar player just like you. I've always known the fretboard was a big deal, but it was kind of overwhelming. I've been teaching guitar since 1987 and I just turned 51. Maybe it's my age or something, but I never really got how some people can learn the fretboard by memorizing diagrams. And I've tried all kinds of stuff like I'm sure you have, and it sure has been frustrating. Like spending hours with my nose stuck in a book packed with hundreds of fretboard diagrams. Or listening to someone who's practically speaking a different language trying to explain exactly what I need to know in a way that I understand it. After spending all that time and money, it never really clicked and it felt like one critical piece of the puzzle was missing. Plus, I've never felt comfortable trusting that I understand or know how to do something without applying it in the real world. I thought there surely must be something easy that helps you to play songs and solos without having to worry about learning every chord and scale. That's when I dug through all my notes and discovered a shocking fact. You don't need to know every chord or how to play all the modes to play the most popular rock, pop, country, metal, or blues songs. You don't need to know how to thread all the scales together to play solos. I realized that you just really need to know triads. A triad is three notes that make up prime chords like major, minor, and diminished. When you can see those three types of triads on your fretboard, you'll play songs faster than ever before. And you can easily combine them to create solos. Triads are kind of like landmarks on a map. I use them to get from point A to point B on the fretboard, and I know when I play them, they'll sound great. Because they're part of the chord and work in any key. When I learned triads, my guitar playing improved tremendously because I always knew where to go. I never got lost and wasn't playing the same old scales over and over again. After a while, I started sharing this with some of my private students. They started getting results too. So I decided to record my exact method and show how anyone can use triads to play songs and solos across the fretboard that sound amazing and feel effortless. And that's how my new course, Fretboard Framework, was created. Here's what you're going to discover. Simple triad patterns that spread out over the entire fretboard so you'll know exactly where to put your fingers. Lots of guitar players seem like they're spending hours practicing boring drills and memorizing every single scale pattern. The good news is you don't have to do that because there are only three types of triads you ever have to learn to play the majority of popular songs and play awesome solos too. This two-hour course is completely online and broken down into short, easy-to-digest videos where I show you exactly how to use triads to play songs and solos across the fretboard. The first few videos explain exactly what a triad is and demonstrate how the three main types of triads, major, minor, and diminished, allow you to play creative harmonies and melodies. They're also powerful for playing songs because you'll learn new voicings so you won't be stuck playing big, blocky chords and your guitar playing will sound more interesting. You can even use triad arpeggios in your solos to create melodic lines that don't sound like you're just playing a boring scale. I show you where the triads are across the fretboard so you'll know exactly where to put your fingers. In the last half of the course, I show you how to unlock the fretboard with the cage system and how to apply everything you learned to play over some jam tracks. This will allow you to really wire triads into your guitar playing and help you see the fretboard in a whole new way. You get lifetime access to my fretboard framework course so you can go at your own pace, Watch the videos again and again until you're ready for more. The videos are short and easy to understand so you never get bogged down with a bunch of useless information that won't improve your guitar playing. Similar good courses cost hundreds of dollars or even a thousand dollars at Berklee College of Music Online. Or you can do like I did and spend thousands of dollars in college learning what I'm going to show you. With all that said, this could easily sell for a thousand dollars. After all, similar courses sell for $14.97. Of course, it won't cost you a thousand dollars, not even five hundred dollars, not even a hundred dollars. You get the complete fretboard framework course for just three payments of $27.60. Or you can save 70% if you want to make one payment of $69. But it gets better because when you order today, you also get two exclusive live sessions where you can ask me your most burning questions about the course. And you don't have to worry about making it because they'll be recorded and uploaded so you can watch them at any time in the members area. 
Another one of the most important skills you can develop as a guitar player is ear training. That's why I've included my Ear Training 2.0 course as a special second bonus. You'll learn the secrets of playing songs by ear and be able to listen to songs and instantly know what notes will sound great for your solos. If you were to buy this on the website a few months back, it would have cost you $99, but you get it free when you order today. And if you order in the next 15 minutes, you'll get my three and a half hour essential guitar skills course that originally sold for $99. You'll discover all the skills you need to be a well-rounded lead guitar player. This will allow you to play freely across the entire fretboard and get really creative when it comes time to solo. With this course, you're going to overcome problems like not knowing where to start and end your solos, worrying about what scale will sound good for leads, and alternative scales you can use to improvise better solos than you ever thought possible. You won't have to worry about feeling lost or confused because your fingers will be trained to instantly find the right notes without any hesitation. So to recap, you get my new fretboard framework course and all the great bonuses I just mentioned for just three payments of $27.60 or one payment of $69. And you're protected by our 30-day guarantee. Truly put it to the test for a full 30 days and see if it's right for you. If you don't think it's a good fit, no big deal. Just contact our friendly support team and they'll issue you a full refund or exchange. No questions asked, no receipt required. However, I can only offer this price and bonuses for a short time. After that, the price increases to $199 and the bonuses will not be included. So click the button below and get started today. As soon as you place your order, you'll get a receipt in your email with instructions on how to access the course. You'll also get a spot in the two live sessions and immediate access to the Ear Training 2.0 and Essential Guitar Scales bonus courses. If you want a simple way to play songs and solos across the fretboard that sounds amazing and looks so effortless that people can't believe how well you're playing without spending hours of your time learning confusing fretboard diagrams, then you're absolutely going to love Fretboard Framework and it's simple to get started. You log into the course and watch the first short video, and as you build your skills, you move to the next video, always at your own pace. You can watch and repeat lessons as many times as you need. Remember, this could easily sell for $1,000, but you can have it today for three payments of $27.60 or one payment of $69. And when you order, you'll also get the two live sessions and immediate access to my Ear Training 2.0 and Essential Guitar Scales courses. You'll learn the secrets of playing songs by ear and all the scales you need to improvise solos over any song. The bonuses alone have a $438 value, and you get our 30-day guarantee. But remember, I can only offer this price and bonuses for a short time. After that, the price increases to $199 and the bonuses won't be included. So click